All right, here I am at Mike Saylor's little studio in the back of his house. He called it the Blue Room, right? Yeah. And Mike, I met probably back 2011. How's it going, Mike? Hey, what's up? Let me get in here. Yeah. And uh, he played some trumpet on the last tune, Protocol 7 soundtrack. And it was real special for me to have him on this recording because, I mean, he does his own thing. He went off to New York and you had a great time up there for how many years? Uh, close to 10. Oh, close to 10 years. And then he reappeared in Austin. But um, do you remember what the first thing he did with me before that? Like, this would be about 15 years ago, 2011. Uh, the Western Swing thing? Yeah, it was uh, uh, House of Wills. House of Wills, yeah. yeah. And we played some uh, some shows with that, which was a lot of fun. We did a record. We did a record, we did yeah. A record, yeah. As we did Christmas record. And so, Part of the vision of this uh, soundtrack for me was it's just very, I was very uh, inspired by, you know, Miles did uh, a soundtrack. You know about that? I he went over, right, he went over to France uh -huh. and they had him come in and you know, he played a bunch of his standard tunes. And, um, and there's sort of this wow factor about it when you, people see it, like, wow, he improvised it in one night, he stayed up all night. And so my approach to writing the score, a lot of times I was just sitting down at the piano and just letting my hands go somewhere with the scene. And, and so I was very inspired by Miles doing that and I, I wanted to have an improvisatory element to all the music and um, build it that way. And so have you come in and, and Mike, you know, he's got great, great chops in, tra in training so he could play sort of a classical theme on the last, Track, which almost has a bit of a Celtic flavor to it. It's got a minor five chord Mixolydian feel to it, um, which adds this sort of sort of longing or mystery. But then I, I brought in his improvisatory ability at the end just to play over the changes of the main chords of this tune, which I think they harmonize. So, uh, so you are familiar with that, that Miles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 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 yeah. yeah. So, I'm curious at the end there, were you just like playing by ear when you improvised the, at the end of the soundtrack? Yeah, that was, I just, I just did one pass of it. Cool. So, in my experience, because I've done a lot of the kind of, this kind of stuff, yeah. if, you if you do it more than a couple of times, it starts to exactly. lose the spontaneity. And so, I listened to it a couple of times, and then I just hit record, and um, I did it once, and then... That's great. I love that. That's exactly. So you get that first take magic where you don't start thinking about it. You don't start going into your cerebral right. mind and questioning like, well, can I do that better? Which, um, doing this film soundtrack, the idea of being on a deadline and almost going with your first whatever can, whatever comes up, you know, you go with that. You don't overanalyze it because you're on a deadline. Sure. It worked really well for a jazz sensibility. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, so another book that was really influential to me is Effortless Mastery sure. by Kenny Werner. And the idea, it's like you get yourself into this state of mind and it's like the ideas kind of appear out of nowhere yeah. Yeah. as opposed to like forcing them or say, you know, it's, it's this tight, what do you call it, tight walk or this place where it's more like you're a channel by sure. trying to make something happen. And then when you, when, you find, when you get into that relaxed state, mm -hmm. you find almost, you, you can see almost anything as good or good enough or usable sure. in a way, yeah. rather than another state where you're you're judging, yeah. you're comparing to yeah. whatever great composers, great players. And yeah. so I found doing that, you know, it's like, with that, the effortless mastery idea, mm -hmm. it's like any sound, any note can be beautiful. Sure, <laughs> yeah. With just I deciding, agree. Yeah, deciding I agree. it is. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You ever heard of that book, The War of Art? Uh, I've heard of it, but I didn't. By Stephen Pressfield. Yeah. It kind of talks about the same thing. It's the same thing that Kenny Warner talks about, except it's fueled through the lens of a of more of a literary vibe because he's a writer. He wrote yeah. um, The Hobbit, and so uh, but it's oh, kind of the same vibe. He talks about flow and getting out of your own way and yeah. that stuff, and uh, I really believe in that stuff. So, right. Yeah. So yeah, so you just did one pass, mm -hmm. and. It's really interesting because in my path, when I started learning jazz as a string player, you know, it really doesn't matter what instrument 
mm -hmm. playing. Obviously, it's not the instrument. And Kenny Werner teaches, you know, classical players mm -hmm. to get into um, what does he call it? The space. The space. He calls yeah. it the space. Sure. Um, early on, when I went, to, I used to go to UT. And now you teach at UT. Mm -hmm. What's your position there again? I am a lecturer in the jazz department. The jazz department. Okay. So I, I was there when um, uh, Jeff Helmer. You know, sort of came in. Mm -hmm. I remember he played Donna Lee. You know, it was like '87, and even before that, I was in high school. I'd go up there and I would sneak in and play in, with jazz books. And I, I played with the jazz ensembles when I was in uh, in high school mm -hmm. in those days. But um, I remember it being with the Abersold thing st materials, very analytical process. You know, there's, sure, there it is, can be. It yeah. can be right. Yeah, it can and be. it was only years later, like where you find that happy medium. Of you have the knowledge and you also, mm -hmm. but then you balance it off with your uh, instincts, your intuition sure, yeah. at the same time, mm -hmm. and um, depending on what you're playing, you know. Sure, so, yeah. Or it could be anything, I guess. But Charlie Parker yeah. used to always say when you're on the bandstand to not think about anything. That's right. But when you're practicing, think about everything. Yeah. You know, that's so, true. Yeah. When you're practicing. Yeah, exactly. And that's in the Effortless Mastery book, he's like, uh, practice is one state of mind, and then. When you're on a gig, you're, you're creating. Then mm -hmm. you just let all that go. Yeah. You're in, and that's when you you are in a full state of acceptance. Yeah. And I mean, even like um, Herbie Hancock talked about yeah, the experience. He always talks about where he played a wrong note. And yeah, Miles it was Miles. Right. Yeah. 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 And Miles played something and made it correct. Sure. Which is a great thing about jazz, or, or at least playing improvised music, that you do have that. Yeah. Available. Yeah. You're playing classical music. It's the wrong note, I guess. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, when you're reading music, it's, it's like a lot of different rules come into play. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and actually, uh, Keith Jarrett talked about that, too, that he, um, because he dipped into classical music classical. a lot, but he was like, oh, the whole culture around it is so, you know, at least what he experienced mm -hmm. was, was like, oh, everybody's so fearful of, you know, mistake and this well, would be in the 60s yeah. and 70s i mean when i play classical yeah. music i'm afraid sure. yeah right i know right <laughs> i get really scared i mean i played with the austin that's symphony a couple right. years ago and i was like so nervous because i'd had to play along with the orchestra and read a solo that's right or if i'm improvising it it's like it's no thing at all you know? right so. because you can in the moment it's that state of mind you can make something that might be judged as incorrect sure uh acceptable or and then it's the other way around. Classical players uh, are fearful of, of the blank page. Sure, you know? yeah, yeah, and then, exactly. And like, how do you do that? It's just crazy. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, it was great to have you yeah, play yeah. on that last Yeah, cut. thanks and, for having me on the um, Protocol 7, Mike plays on the last, the, like, as the movie is fading out, you'll hear his trumpet. Mm -hmm. And did you play that on a, uh, like, a beat normally play trumpet? Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one right here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You didn't have to do it on a... Um, C trumpet or something. No. Awesome. I don't even know. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks, man. Bro. Yeah. Okay, yeah. appreciate it.